Hi, I'm Adam Pritchard, Assistant Curator of Paleontology for the Virginia Museum of Natural History, and I'm back with another tale of ancient life. Last week, I introduced you to the huge cast of characters of fossil sharks from the Carmel Church Quarry, so the sharks that lived off the coast of Virginia 14 million years ago. But that kind of left a lot of story to tell. I plan on coming back to the sharks in the future, but I felt like something was missing. It was leaving out someone. The shark's closest relatives in the world. And then it hit me like a ray of sunshine. Because it's, it's rays, like stingrays. I, I thought it was funny. This is the tale of the fossil rays. Now, it's easy to imagine in your mind the incredible, distinctive, and flattened body of a ray, with a long tail usually arcing out behind it. In the legendary stingrays, this tail carries the poison that protects them from danger. However, rays are actually very close relatives of sharks, and they share a lot of features as a result of that close relation. One of those features is a skeleton that's mostly made up of cartilage. And you may remember from last week, that sharks, the fossil record of sharks, is mostly teeth because cartilage is not a tissue that preserves very often in the fossil record. So only the hardest parts of those animals preserve. Same problem with rays. To identify a ray fossil in the fossil record, you have to identify the small parts that are hard enough to fossilize, the teeth and the spine or stinger. If you go to an aquarium and look at a ray tank, you often see them running their mouths across the bottom of the tank or even the walls of the tank, sort of gumming at whatever's there. It's kind of, they're kind of goofy looking, to be honest. But what they're doing is feeling for their prey because rays are predators, much like sharks, but they don't use sharp teeth to catch and process their prey. Rays usually look for small animals in the water that are shelled. Snails, clams, just anything with a hard shell. And to get through those shells, rays have very, very special teeth. Ray teeth are not sharp, but very flat, in some cases rounded. It's, it's honestly, it's been compared to sort of pavement, the way ray teeth look. It's a lot of flat or rounded teeth sort of jammed together into these big surfaces that come together in the upper and lower jaws to crunch their prey. This is one ray tooth right here from an animal called Atobatus. This uh, would have fitted together with a lot of other sort of V-shaped teeth into a big flat surface, so Atobatus could um, consume its prey. You can tell it's this particular kind of animal because they have this point at the, uh, the front of their, uh, their central jaw plate. This is the flat surface that would have faced out into the mouth of the animal. And if you flip it on the other side, it almost looks sort of like a comb. This is the broad, flat root that would have positioned the tooth within the animal's jaws. Now, quite often with ray teeth in the fossil record, they're very, very hard structures. But you don't get the whole tooth like the ones I just showed you. You usually get something like this. So you get the flat surface and then that comb on the bottom but it's only like a fragment of a whole ray sort of tooth or tooth plate. Oh man, I just found a really good one. This is a pretty substantial part of a ray tooth plate. I'm not sure what species, but you can see all of those big flat teeth jammed together. Flip it over to the other side. You can see those sort of comb-like roots in that tooth. That's pretty cool. I swear I find new treasures in the VMNH collections every single day. actually did some repairs on a specimen as part of this episode because there was one specimen that was kind of in rough shape that I really wanted to show off. The next one is from a site in the Yorktown Formation, so a little bit different in age, a little younger. But this is a stingray spine. So you can see its sides are just lined with these tooth-like processes, these little denticles that would have made removing the spine harder. This would have sat on top of the tail, and the stingray would whip its tail around almost scorpion-like to jab the sharp end, which is broken off over here. If the spine breaks off, it just starts growing another one. But this was just a particularly large spine. I mean, just imagine this 
you know, even a part of this going into your, your arm or your leg. It's, it's kind of a terrifying idea. And it would have been covered in venom in life. Would have made a really bad day for whatever poor predator tried to come after this ray. So much of the ray fossil record is these teeth and these spines. And although that doesn't show us the whole of the body, we can use those to identify how close rays like the ones from Carmel Church are to modern species. With these two pieces of the body, we can say a lot about the presence of rays in ancient fossil ecosystems, still trying to piece together their roles in those ecosystems, and still trying to tell their tales of ancient life.